Today is the day I'm going to be finishing up the details in the Beetlejuice waiting room. First I'm going to be focusing on the furniture and then I'm going to be making the accessories. There is one thing I didn't quite get to and I will tell you that later in the video so actually there will be a fourth video coming but I think that will be a better format for explaining some of the lighting that I'm trying to work with. Before we get started with the miniatures I wanted to let you know that this t-shirt is on sale today. This is my first round of merch shirts. It says, not to brag, but my vacation home is 1 12th scale. In the last video, a lot of you said you enjoyed the design. So if you want to get one for yourself, I will leave a link in the description box below. It also has a small BHM for Bentley House Minis up in the corner. And the house shape is similar to what I started with for my very first project, which was the Adams Family House. There's a few more colors than this, so I'm probably going to be shopping right after this video goes up. So without further ado, let's get started on the furniture. Here's what the furniture looked like when I left off last week. Most of this is going to be made over into something that will work for this project. These two green pieces were donated to me by Emily, thank you Emily, and then I found this love seat that I think will match really well. One of the problems with these pieces for my scene is that the bases are really wide and they're made of wood so they're incredibly hard and it's I, there's just no leeway on the floor space. I just need a little bit more room. I'm going to use this sharp tool that was sent to me from Germany. I've used it a lot as you can tell by the thumbprints on the blade but it's going to help me separate the base of each one of these furniture pieces. I'm not quite sure how old they are, but they were very well made and did not want to come apart. The blade did work for the two green pieces. As you can see, I got the wooden base off and I just used some scissors to cut through any remaining fabric. So that did work for the three seater couch and for the individual little side chair. The tan chair did not want to come apart, so I ended up having to use the microwave trick where you microwave the piece of furniture for 10 seconds at a time until the glue gets soft and comes apart. However, that also results in the chair falling apart. I did have quite a bit of hand pain after working with the green couches, so I maybe should have just done the microwave trick from the beginning. But I did get the tan chair back together and then it was time to start working on the new bases. For ease of construction, I've decided to make the new bases from foam board. I'm going to be trying to match the exact same thickness of the wood pieces that I took off. So that's going to be about three pieces of foam board. I'm using some scrap foam board that already had a couple pieces glued together. So I'm cutting out a shape that's identical to the bottom of the sofa and then I'm adding one more layer. So here you can see how much more floor space this is going to save. And in a dollhouse, every single square inch counts. I'm going to be adding this onto the bottom of the top part of the chair and just gluing it on with tacky glue or hot glue, whatever seems to work. To cover up the foam board, I'm going to be adding a little ruffled skirt that goes all the way around the couch. I'm not really worrying about the back of the couch, but once I get to the sides, I'm going to start to accordion fold the fabric so that it does look as though it is pleated and has a little bit more interest. This is easily done with a hot glue gun. It makes it go pretty quickly and I will be painting over this couch so I'm not too worried about any glue that's showing through the fabric. I tried to make sure and use a fabric that somewhat matched the original color. Since I am painting over it, I want to make sure that my base fabric is about the same color so I don't have any problems when I start the painting process. Once I have pleated all the way around the edge of the couch, I'm just cutting off any excess. I want to add a little trim that goes between the existing couch and the new pleated skirt. For this, I'm using a thick brown thread. I'm just going to start it with a little bit of hot glue, but then I am going to be using tacky glue all around the area where the two pieces meet. This is also going to fray check the fabric at the same time, and then the thread can just be added on top of the glue so that it dries in place. Although the painting process is going to fray check the fabric, I'm also going to do this to the bottom edge of the fabric just in case I end up moving it around and it gets really frayed. This will just keep it from getting too messy and my fabric will be nice by the time I get to painting it. 
I did the same exact thing for the single chair and then for the double chair or the love seat I added a similar fabric to the bottom of it and now all the pieces are ready to be painted. I'm going to be trying to use a fabric painting medium. I've never tried this before. This is something you add into your existing craft paint that you use and mix it together to make a fabric paint. I'm going to do the two green couches with this method and then I'm going to do the tan couch with my original method that I've tried before which is acrylic paint and Mod Podge and I thought it would be fun to compare the two to see which one works better. The mixed fabric paint went on very smoothly. It did take about three coats for me to get complete coverage over the existing fabric, but I was very impressed with how well the paint took to the fabric, although it is fabric paint, so that makes sense. When it came to the tan couch, I just used craft paint straight from the tube without anything else mixed in. This also took about three coats of paint to put on, but it was a little bit more difficult to get the paint onto the fabric. It felt like the fabric was soaking it in a lot more. Before I add the Mod Podge onto the tan couch, I wanted to go ahead and compare how the two look. The mixed fabric paint, the gray paint, is a little bit more of a shiny finish, but it is very smooth on the fabric and it is still where you could push on it and it does feel like a cushion. It does still have a leathery look, so I really wouldn't consider this a fabric couch. It looks more like a leather couch. The tan couch looks a little bit more crusty and dry and this is where I start to add the Mod Podge because it just doesn't have a very nice looking or feeling finish. The Mod Podge helps give it more of a leathery look. There are definitely leather chairs that you can see down in the waiting room area so I was okay with going with all leather. For this process, I like to use matte Mod Podge. I've never tried it with glossy Mod Podge, but I think the matte still gives it just the right amount of shine to give it that leathery look. And I was really surprised with how similar the two methods ended up in the end. I really couldn't tell that big of a difference except for I know what it looked like before I added the Mod Podge. And of course, because these chairs have been sitting in the Netherworld waiting room for uh, who knows how long I needed to age them. It was really fun to try and come up with a method to create an aged leather look. I even think I could have gone a little bit further, but I do know that in the end there's going to be people sitting on these seats, so I just, I didn't go too wild with it. What I'm doing is putting my finger just barely into a little bit of paint, this is a tan color, and then rubbing it onto the surface of the leather. I'm hoping this will give the appearance that this chair has just been worn over time and the finish is coming off and it's exposing some of the colors that are underneath the top layer of the leather. I also added a little bit of a deeper brown in a few areas, which I think helped. And as I said, I could have gone a little bit further with this, but I do know that I don't want the chairs to be the focus point of the waiting room. I just want them to accent the people who are going to be sitting on them soon. For the tan chair, I started to use the deeper brown right away, and I do think that made it look like it had absorbed some oils as people had been sitting on them, but then in the end I used some gray and I think maybe even a lighter tan to give it more of a worn look. At this point, I really didn't know what colors were going to get me the effect that I liked, and so I was just playing around and trying to see what I thought looked correct. I think in the future, I do want to do a project where I focus on old, worn leather couches and just really go to town trying to make them look accurate and just really, really abandoned. But for now, I'm pretty happy with the effects I got by just playing around with a few different colors. But of course, I couldn't leave it there. I did want to do a last wash over all of the couches. So I'm using a dark brown and a lot of water to create a wash that's just going to get into all the cracks and crevices and really make it look like some dirt has grimed up over these chairs over the years. 
I didn't want to go too heavy with it, so I made sure to make it really watery so I could easily wipe off any excess. But I did make sure to get a few splotches here and there that maybe looks like, uh, you know, maybe someone was decaying in place. This is a waiting room in the underworld, so uh, you just never know. But um, I'm pretty happy with the results. I think that final wash helped the gray couches and the tan couch look like they've been sitting in the same room for as many years together. And here you can see the differences between the before and after of the fabrics and of course the difference in the floor space. Just by doing that one simple change of changing out the bases, I got several inches back in my waiting room which are going to come in handy. Now I know lamps are really more along the lines of accessories, but these lamps are going to have to be glued down to the furniture. So I have to go ahead and make them so I know that they will work with the furniture I'm about to make. Because I already had so many accessories I needed to make for this room, I decided to 3D print these lamps and I'm pretty happy with how they came out. There are a couple lamps you can see in the waiting room. They all kind of have this rounded body with a large shade on top. So I printed the shade support also, and I think this is going to make a pretty good replica of what I could see in the waiting room scene. One thing I had to keep in mind while I was designing these is I do want my lamps to light up. I found this lighting kit from Evan Designs. I will put a link up to that in the description box and it works really well with how I designed this kit. The wires fit right through the center of the lampshade, through the center of the lamp body, and the light helps hold the shade on. I also made sure to add a slit in the back of the lamp and this is going to allow the wires to come out the back instead of the bottom so that the lamp can sit flat on the surface. The Evan Designs lamp kit comes with a battery and a button, however I already used that part of the kit so there you could see it lighting up with just me holding the battery with the two wires. Before the lighting can be glued in permanently, I want to go ahead and paint the lamp bodies. I'm going to be painting one orange and one green. The green one is behind Barbara when you see her leaning over to speak to Adam. Both of the lamp bodies seem to be made from ceramics, so I'm going to try and replicate that. I'm also going to be painting the lamp shade just a light gray. For both the orange and green lamp, I'm going to be dabbing on lighter and darker versions of the colors and just trying to make them like a smooth gradient to give the lamp bodies a little bit more interest. Once they were finished, I sprayed both of them with three coats of Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Glaze and this is going to get rid of any of the 3D printer lines and give it a really smooth, shiny finish and I do think it came out looking a little bit more like ceramic and I really like the effect. I also used some watercolor on some paper that I cut out that's supposed to be the right shape for the lampshade. To figure out this shape, all I did was roll the lampshade frame onto a piece of paper and trace it out as I rolled it to figure out what shape I needed. To start gluing it to the frame, I'm just going to add glue to a couple of the vertical posts. And because I had pre-curved the paper or just kind of forced it to curve before I started gluing, it wrapped around the frame fairly easily. Then I just continued to add glue as I was wrapping the shade around the frame and then once I got to the end I added the last bit of glue onto the paper so that the paper overlapped. The cardstock worked pretty well for being strong enough to hold its shape but then once I added the LED in place inside of the lamp it still allowed light to come through like an actual lampshade. Finally it was time to glue the two pieces together even though the LED and wires help hold the shade to the lamp body, I decided to glue them together without the LED in place because I wasn't quite sure at the time exactly what bulb I was going to be using in the end. I'm using the bamboo skewer to hold the two pieces so that they are lined up while the glue dries. And here are the two completed lamps ready to go on their side tables. If you really like the lamps that I just created, I went ahead and 3D printed a few extra and made them into a kit. It's going to be in my store, which you can find the link for that in the description box below. 
Now on to the mid-century side tables and the coffee table, which you can see in the waiting room scene. You can clearly see a double-decker side table next to Barbara and a double-decker coffee table that's in front of the couch. That's what I'm going to be making right now out of wood. I haven't made anything out of wood in a while. I have a large pile of scrap wood, so I thought this would be the perfect chance to use it. The channel Square Despair often uses popsicle sticks glued together, so I decided to try this method. I wanted to start with the coffee table because I think it's the most interesting. I glued three jumbo popsicle sticks together and then made an oval shape on the top and I made sure to center it on the center popsicle stick. I added some little match sticks in order to strengthen the three popsicle sticks and then started to cut them out. This was a bit of a tedious task, but in the end it did work really well and they stayed glued together. I was able to get the top oval on just one popsicle stick, so I cut that out as well, and then I sanded all the edges of both pieces. I need to create some kind of structure that would pop the top oval up above the bottom oval. I decided to use some more popsicle sticks and I glued one lengthwise on the bottom and then I made a T-shape out of two other smaller pieces so it would sit on top and give that double decker effect. Once glued in place, this is how it looks. I wanted to add a skirt around the bottom oval. That's kind of hard to do in wood, so I decided to do this in chipboard. Once I paint it, you won't be able to tell that it's two different materials. I pre-bent the chipboard before adding the glue to the bottom of the oval, but then it was easy to add the chipboard as I went around the edge. Now I have a skirt for the bottom of my coffee table and it's time to add the legs. I'm going to be using barbecue skewers for the legs. These are super easy to find at the dollar store or at the grocery store and they're typically pretty cheap. They're also tapered at one end which make them really great for mid-century furniture. I'm just going to be adding a dab of glue. The skirt really helps me line up the legs and it gives a place for the legs to rest while the glue is drying. Here's how the coffee table is looking and I'm ready to move on to the double decker side table. I'm going to go ahead and use those curved pieces that I had previously cut around the oval for the coffee table. These are going to make great supports for holding up that second layer. I actually had to cut them again because I didn't realize how tall they actually were. I'm all just kind of eyeballing this from what I see in the movie. I made another set of popsicle sticks that were glued together in order to get a wide enough base for the bottom part of this table. Then I added my two support pieces on top and then another smaller piece at the very top. And this is how it's looking so far. I wanted to add another skirt on the bottom. Because this isn't rounded, I can go ahead and use my match sticks. And now I have four corners where I can easily place my legs. I'm going to be using the same bamboo skewers. I did sharpen their ends just a little bit with some sandpaper so I could use the same ones. I glued them in place and now I have my double decker side table. I went ahead and made another table that's exactly the same, however it doesn't have the extra top and this one's just going to kind of be hidden in the back of the room but I needed another table to add my lamp. And if you didn't think I was going to get brown in this room somehow, you were sorely mistaken. I am going to be painting these tables all with a dark brown. And then I decided to age them in a similar fashion as I had done on the couches where I'm just going to be dipping my finger into some paint and then gently rubbing over the surface of the furniture. I think this gives it a little bit different effect than if I had done this with a paintbrush. It just feels like it looks a little bit more worn to me and I really like how it ended up looking. It just looks like the edges have had years of people putting magazines on them and pulling them off. It did create quite an effect on my hands though. I'm going to also be painting these chairs with brown. I am going to be putting a layer of Mr. Super Clear on first. Whenever I'm making over a piece of dollhouse furniture that has a shiny finish on it, I find that Mr. Super Clear really helps give me a surface to paint on and the paint sticks really well. 
I'm aging these in a similar way with the tan first and this was really fun to do because it had a lot of little details that were sculpted into the legs and into the back of the chairs. I also decided to add some black paint and do a similar process. When I see older wooden chairs I feel like many times they've kind of soaked in the oils and sometimes they get darker over the years just in those areas where the skin really touches the wood so i decided to add that effect as well although i do realize that most of this is going to be covered up by people sitting in the chairs at some point i also made sure to do a final coat of mr super clear over all of my paintwork now it's time to finally add the lamps onto the tables. I had also figured out what LEDs I wanted to use at that point, so they are permanently glued into the lamps. I'm going to be bending the wires so that they kind of naturally slope down to the ground before I glue them onto the table. Gluing them down is going to help keep me from knocking them over every time I go to do something inside the room. Now that I had finished up with all the big pieces of furniture, I wanted to take a break and kind of figure out the ceiling. Of course, Stormy had to help me because I was sitting on the floor. When you're sitting on the floor, you're in Stormy's territory and she owns you in that moment. So she was being very helpful as I was trying to fit everything in place. I just had to make a few adjustments to my previous cardboard pattern. With Stormy's help, I was able to finish creating the ceiling. However, I'm going to save that process and the tutorial for how I made it for another video. The ceiling is going to involve some lighting and some wiring, and we had a few issues as we went along with that. So I've decided to make that another video so I can show you the ceiling process and the lighting at the same time, and hopefully explain a little bit of the idea behind what we're doing with the, elect the electronics. Elect is it electronics? Is that the right word? Electronics is a word, yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Electronical is not a word. No. Okay. Now on to the first of many accessories. Of course, I need to start with the bright red ticket machine that you first see when Barbara and Adam walk into the waiting room. I decided to laser cut these pieces because I needed some perfectly rounded edges to pull off the effect. I have two pieces that are kind of Q shaped and those are going to be the outer edges and then I have four pieces that line up on the inside that are going to be my interior pieces and they have a jut out on the back that will help me attach the ticker ticket taker the ticket ticket machine whatever it's called to the pole that's going to hold it up in the waiting room. Once all the layers are glued together, I have two side pieces that stick out on either end. These are going to create the little tunnel where the tickets come out. I'm going to be using some cardstock that I cut to the correct width, and then I'm just going to glue that on the underside of the ticket machine. From the same width of cardstock, I'm going to cut a smaller piece that's going to go on the very top part of the tunnel, and that will complete a little opening where the tickets will come out. I'm also going to cut an even thinner piece of cardstock that's going to wrap around the opening to give it a little bit of a lip. This part of the ticket machine is going to be painted in black. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'm going to go ahead and sand all of the edges. It's supposed to be a little bit rounded, so sanding the edge of the mat board is really going to help with that. Then I'm going to grab a barbecue skewer and I'm going to be gluing the back part of the ticket machine to the barbecue skewer. To help the glue hold, I'm making a bracket out of some cardstock. This is going to go around the skewer and hold on to the bump out you can see at the back of the ticket machine. This is going to reduce the risk that the barbecue skewer and the ticket machine will ever come apart. Here you can see how the bracket is going to hold on to that bump out. I'm just going to let this dry before I start the painting process. I'm going to be painting this a bright red because as I found online, this is what color they all are. It is a little bit difficult to see the one in the movie because of the angle, but I'm pretty sure it's this typical red with the black edge. I'm only going to need part of the skewer in order to install it, so I'm just painting part of it red. The rest of it will be cut off later. I'm going to put this into some foam and use my triple thick glaze again to hopefully give it more of a plastic look. 
Once it's finished, it's time to start creating the tickets. The tickets are a pretty important part of the movie because you have to take a ticket in order to be served in the waiting room. To create these, I made a long thin strip of cardstock and then I made marks every quarter inch or so and then I used a nibbler tool, just the corner of it, to make little nibbles into the side of the paper. In the movie, it does look like the corners are straight on their tickets, but I think this gives a better effect in miniature. Now, of course, I have to make the now serving sign that goes along with the ticket machine. I made sure to laser cut a 03, such as you see in this scene at the end of the movie. And then I also laser cut the words now serving because I'm going to use that as a stencil to create the white letters that go at the top of the sign. I'm doing thin layers of white paint to hopefully not make it too much of a smudgy mess. There still was a little bit of spillage of paint that went underneath the stencil, but it was easy enough to clean up with a pointy paintbrush and a little bit of black paint. Once I had gotten that done, it did look rather nice, I think, and stood out against the black cardstock. To make the box that's going to hold the LEDs that are going to light up this sign, I did it the same exact way I did the no exit sign, so I'll make sure to put a link in the description box below if you want to check out that video and see how I made it. These two are pretty important to the waiting room, so I'm glad to have them finished. And in the very last scene, it's very clear that you can see a speaker on the wall. It's playing music when Beetlejuice is in the waiting room himself. Thankfully, the speaker is a rectangle, so it was pretty easy to hand cut out of mat board. I ended up gluing two rectangles together to make a double thickness. I have this material that I think really looks like speaker material, and so I just glued that onto the front of the mat board, and then I made sure to wrap the fabric around the edges. I did this in a similar fashion as I would if I was upholstering something. To really make this look like a speaker, I wanted to make a little darkened circle in the center. I'm going to use a circle punch to punch out a hole in a piece of paper, and then I'm using a very dry brush with some black paint on it to just dab through the center, and this is going to give me a darker area to hopefully trick the mind that there's actually a speaker behind that fabric. Then all I had to do was add a frame out of matte board and then paint it brown. This might have been the fastest and easiest miniature to make out of the entire set, but I really enjoyed the results and maybe I might add a few speakers to my other scenes in the future. And lastly, I need to make the information sign that sits in front of Miss Argentina's office on the little ledge. This was another one that was just easier to design in the computer and 3D print. These letters are so tiny that I knew it would be really hard to get them looking right if I had tried to make them by hand. The paint job for this one is going to be super simple. It's just going to be one layer of gray acrylic paint, and then I'm going to go back with a black acrylic wash and make sure I get all of that black paint in between the letters. Once that's dried, I'm going to brush a little bit more gray paint just on the very top of the letters so I make sure that you see the word. And I think this might be the last one we need to make before we start putting the room together. The ledge I created is a little narrower than the one that's in the movie, so I'm having to make a few changes. For instance, there's also a huge book. But as I said in the very beginning of this project, I'm going for more of the essence of the scene or the essence of Beetlejuice. And if I don't get everything 100% accurate, I'm giving myself a little bit of a leeway and saying that's okay. So now, let's put it all together. I know it's been a long video so far, but I thought I'd show you a little bit of my in-between process between switching from working on the individual miniatures to working on the house. Because the base that I'm working in is so large, I have to make sure that I clear everything off of my desk, including anything that holds up my cameras, so that I can get it onto the desk. Thankfully, I invested in an adjustable desk so I can move it all the way down in order to get heavy things on the desk, and then I can lift it back up so that I don't have to be hunched over while I'm working on the inside. Then I can just transfer my lights and get started. Here's the room as I had previously left it. Now it's time to put all this furniture in place. 
this is one of my favorite things to do because I think it really starts to give the room its character. There was a lot of character on the walls and in the paneling that we did in the last video, but the furniture really adds a lot, especially the pops of color that come from the lamps, and I really like the dinginess from the couches. I also want to show you the installation process I'm going to go through for the ceiling. Even though I didn't show you how I made the ceiling in this video, I am going to be making a future video on it. In order to install it, I went ahead and traced out where it seemed to sit really well, and I made a line against the wall. I had to remove all the furniture because I just knew I was going to knock something over and break it. Uh, just at the very last moment of the video. That's something I am very likely to do. I painted a few strips of wood in a gray color that matches the gray that's on the back wall and glued that in place. I used a combination of tacky glue and hot glue. I first did the one in the back because I knew that was where most of the weight of the ceiling was going to sit. Once I was happy with the fit of the ceiling against that beam, I could go ahead and draw in the rest of the beams. I am drawing it with a red pencil because previously I had used a gray pencil and I wanted to make sure I had the correct pencil line when I installed the other pieces of wood that were going to help hold up the ceiling. Now that it's in place, I realized there was a gap in the center, but that's something I'm going to work on and finish in the future ceiling video. And just when I thought I was done creating miniatures, I forgot I needed to make the art and the frames that go on the wall. I have a whole other video over framing, so I will link that in the description, but I thought it was extra interesting when I was researching the paintings for the waiting room. They all seem to have something to do with bridges or water, which is very much related to the way that Barbara and Adam died, which I just think is hilarious on the part of the set designers. All of them, literally all of them, are bridges or water. And special thank you to Brad who went the extra length to find very close replicas of the paintings that are in the waiting room. I did, however, add some of my own extra special paintings, uh, specifically one that might be even a little bit more devious than what the set designers put in. Now that I have the furniture, the accessories, and the paintings all in place, I need to add those final few little tiny details. Specifically, the information sign that sits in front of Miss Argentina. I also need to add the now serving sign. As you can see, I have a wire that's coming out of the ceiling. This is going to go behind that sign and make the little 03 light up red. I also need to install the ticket machine or the take a ticket machine. I'm going to cut off the skewer as I had mentioned before and I'm just going to add tacky glue to the back and the bottom so that I can glue it to the top of the ledge and up against the wall. I used a chair underneath it to help it dry in place. And here's how it's looking so far. I think Miss Argentina is going to be all set to get started on work. I'm adding a few magazines. I had to add in a miniature collector. I'm adding in some food magazines, some crafting magazines that I think will fit with the era, and then a few other ones that I think the residents might enjoy. And thank you to Jolene who sent me several handbooks for the recently deceased. These are gonna be perfect once I have people sitting in the waiting room waiting to be served, because of course, you don't wanna forget your handbook. We forgot our handbook. I also wanted to make sure and thank Jillian for sending in this house for the attic diorama. Thank you so much for joining me on this three-part series to create the Beetlejuice waiting room. I guess it's more like four parts or maybe even five parts or maybe even seven parts because I still have to make the ceiling video and there will be all the videos that are over the dolls that I create that are going to be sitting in the seats I created in this video. But I did at least get the main look of the room down in three videos, so I'm pretty proud of myself for that. As I said, I do plan to make the inhabitants of the waiting room in August. That's going to be my huge August project. 
However, don't think there's not going to be any other Beetlejuice videos until August because I will be returning to this project. I do have a few other projects that need my attention. Oh, I need to add, I need to add some chalk. Hold on. Stormy, where's my chalk pen? I found a color, so this will have to do. Yeah, it's not going to match. Sorry. <laughs> purple part is the waiting room, so now we know. <laughs> if you are interested in getting a Bentley House Minis t-shirt, make sure to check out the link in the description box below. The t-shirts are only going to be available for two weeks. May 15th is going to be the very last day that you can order one. I hope you all have an amazing week, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! I thought you all might like a little glimpse into what it's like working with Stormy on a project. It's almost like fighting with a very aggressive teddy bear who really doesn't want you to get any work done at all. And I do want to share, if you have a coworker like mine and you're having trouble getting work done, I have found that playing with their favorite stuffed toy banana on the floor for a good while really does tire them out so that you can get back to work and get what you need done. <laughs>